many years ago you were a sculptor in residence here at Chesterwood. How does it feel to be back working at Daniel Chester French's former home and studio workshop? It was such a ripe period for me then. And I guess partly I was thinking, if I get half that much out of it, it will be well spent. But my great delight, because I've, I've hardly been here since, uh, it hasn't changed, which is wonderful. But it's been protected. And the Berkshires, in many ways, has been preserved and protected. The other thing I feel, as I felt then, and I still haven't done anything about it, is this kind of you know, real estate envy. <laughs> he made such a beautiful place for himself, and then his daughter had the brilliant uh, fortitude and insight to protect it, to make sure that it was, you know, that it was available for others to see what it can be to live a life of an artist. What inspired me is when you told me the story that when you were here the first time that you started to begin to carve in wood for the first time and walking the forest. I haven't been into Great Barrington to, to see if the hardware store is still there or not. I don't know if I could even find it, but there was a man who just helped, guided me. I, I, I would say, it's, I'd be in there so long, like staring at these tools, thinking, and he'd say, can I help you? And I'd say, well, he said, what are you trying to do? Tell me what you're trying to do, and we'll see if we have the tool. And I said, well, I want to carve a log. <laughs> I learned from him. <laughs> I learned what tools and the tools taught me how to do. And you were here a little bit longer. You stayed I found in a barn, barn. in Stockbridge to it. Going back and forth a little to New York, but spending as much time as possible.